Long hind legs are perfect for guiding the ball. The shorter front ones are powerful pushing levers, shifting 10 times the beetle's weight. That was a clip from BBC Earth narrated by David Attenborough on the plight of the humble dung beetle. So let's find out how poop has kept this species going strong for 30 million years. <laughs> So why exactly are beetles hoarding globes of excrement? The first reason is sustenance. Excrement, though a waste product, contains nutrients and water content. And in Dung Beetleville, that's a well-rounded meal. In fact, the majority of their diet is feces, although they sometimes nosh on carrion, leaf litter, mushrooms, and decaying fruit. The other reason is that it makes a perfect baby crib. According to the San Diego Zoo, after a chance encounter at a dung pat, male and female rollers establish a pair bond. The male offers the female a giant-sized brood ball. If she accepts, the two beetles ride off into the sunset together, and then they find a safe place for their dung ball. Then the female deposits eggs, and the resulting larvae eat their way through the ball, emerging in their final form, with a pair of wings and six legs, two of which are incredibly strong and help to roll their future dung ball meals. But dung beetles won't dine on just any old piece of scat. They tend to prefer excrement from omnivores. Wyatt Hoback, a professor of the University of Nebraska at Kearney, studied 9,000 dung beetles of 15 different species. He found that the smellier the poop, which generally came from omnivores like humans and chimpanzees, well, the more prized it was. And not all dung beetles are into exotic dining options either. In 1778 in Australia, when cows and other large livestock not indigenous to Australia were imported, dung beetles turned up their noses at the new excrement, which meant there was a huge infestation of flies and other parasites, and beetles who fed on cow dung had to be imported. But perhaps the most fascinating aspect of a dung beetle is its navigation abilities. Imagine if you were a beetle and before you a gloriously large pile of poop plopped down. If you were the Anthophagus taurus, it'd be no problem to shape and then push it up to 656 feet or 200 meters away. That's because this species can pull 1,141 times its own body weight, the equivalent of an average person pulling six double-decker buses full of people. And navigating that dung ball would be a breeze because it turns out that dung beetles use the sky to travel in a completely straight line. In the paper by DAC et al. Quote, dung beetles use the Milky Way for orientation. Researchers documented how they covered the dorsal or top eyes of some beetles with tiny little hats. When the behatted beetles couldn't see the sky, as in one experiment, or they couldn't see the lights in a planetarium, as in another experiment, they walked around in circles. So they couldn't orient themselves to the moon or the Milky Way, and they were essentially lost. Moreover, beetles occasionally climb atop their dung balls and do what looks like a little jig. They're not actually dancing, but cooling off and sometimes using their elevated position as a lookout for would-be competitors. And that competition can be fierce. In Dr. John Caponera's book, Insects, and wildlife, he detailed how 16,000 beetles clamored over a 1.5 kilogram or 3.3 pound load of elephant dung, dismantling it and carrying it away in just two hours. Competition could be why one species of dung beetle sprouted horns. Nicola Watson and Lee Simmons of the University of Western Australia, Perth, pitted female dung beetles Anthophagia sagittarius against each other in a race for animal feces. They found that the females with larger horns collected more excrement, giving them the competitive edge. So to recap, dung beetles are robust, tiny astronomers who navigate by the stars with laser-like focus as they concentrate on their one mission in life to collect, roll, and eat poop. Oh, and ancient Egyptians worshiped them a lot. We both know you're gonna watch more videos, so why not these three? Yeah. Right here. Do it to it. Right here. Enter the paranoid, delusional, and outright depressing world of space madness. Hey, Robert. Hey. I was thinking for the next podcast episode, what about seed pies? Ooh. <laughs> we humans have a tendency to misunderstand the Cenobite, casting them as some sort of hellish torture in a Christian moral universe. Yep.